I just wanted to share which file I made here, um, or what I've been doing on the Cricut.com. Once you log in here with your user ID, it'll say new project with a little arrow at the top. And then when you scroll down, you can see all these different ones. And this one says thank you. All I do is click on it. It pops up with all this information on it. It tells you what you need. And I've already loaded the pin into my um, device. I should have showed that, I guess. But um, you just click on the Make It Now. How many projects do you want to make? Well, for this one, I did two because on a 12 by 12 paper, I realized that two um, will fit. Which arrow is it? See? Voila. And it makes it perfect. And then if you clicked on this, you notice that it cut the little background thing perfect. And click on go. My operating system is Visa, I mean Vista. Um, and I'm in Firefox. I could not get the designs uh, the Cricut Design Studio to work in anything but Firefox, but there's been no problem with having um, Internet Explorer and Firefox so far, so that was good. So all you have to do now, sorry that lighting went weird. Okay, now you click on, once this shows up, it has loaded what you're going to cut, exactly what you're going to do, into the Explorer. So all you have to do from this point is everything with the Explorer. And I have already put my black cardstock, which you can't really see very well, on the mat and just rubbed it down. And my mat still, it's still curved from where it was in the box with the packaging, but it hasn't been too bad. Okay, let me try to fix the lighting. When you get your Explorer, it says, um, it already tells you easily about what A and the B means. B is for blade, A is for accessory. All you do to insert the pin is to open that part up, and then you press up while you slide this part down. Or, you can just push it down like that, close that up, and I'll show you the next part. Loading the map. No, we did not go into the dark ages. Alright, see this is blinking here? This is the load button. Press the load button. It'll automatically load the map on its own. Presto changeo. Now, this little glue the blinking cricket button press that now it's getting the information from the computer onto the Explorer I wasn't going to video this part because I felt like, and I showed it again in the other video, um, but this is a different kind of paper. This is more like the first project you make when you get it. This is on different cardstock. Oh, and there was something I forgot to mention earlier. Well, it's, almost, it's on the cutting phase. It just did the drawing phase. Um, for this thinner cardstock, and this is textured, even though it's textured, it's not heavy enough weight that you would need to put it on a heavy doll. I had it first set on this middle 
of the cardstock feature for the Make It Now thing that the supply came in the box with it and it was too deep and I've now um, cut my blade on the mat. Now someone complained that there were no blade depth settings. Well that isn't true. They're all based on these different features. So if you go to cut it and it doesn't do it quite the way you want it, you can go up or down and that makes it more custom. And this is a little bit less confusing than um, trying to figure out pressure, blades and all that, I think. Um, at least it has been for me. Now if you did the fabric, you have to have a, a fusible heat um, backing fusible web backing that you'd iron onto your fabric before you could actually cut it out. So I think some people were having trouble with that. And this poster board is self-explanatory. There's iron on the vinyl and the paper. And I haven't tried the paper yet. This is literally the third cut I've made on this machine since I got it just a few days ago. Oh, custom is when you want to do like deep cut, um, the deeper, like the card stocks, the cereal boxes, things like that. Um, here's the I put this on the middle of the light cardstock, and as you can see, it seems to be cutting out very well. I'm very happy about it um, so far. I really love the way it draws. You can see where the only thing I can say is you can see where the marker picks up and, and puts down, but now it doesn't seem to do that on the other one I have um, made with the crazy art where you can see those notable dots. Once the thing's cut out, no one's going to be paying attention to it. It's just being ridiculous, really, to think about it. So, we'll look at this. And I think I'm going to back this in a different color. Because I didn't have any more of the jade. They only supplied enough jade just to, to back the first card you do. That was all that was there. So, I'm going to use a different one from my stash. And I will show at the end of this video... Um, my completed project. I'm going to put the enamel dots together uh, that I've made from the pony beads. I'm going to put those on the on the card in the front and then I'm going to put um, some close to my heart stamping on the inside of it. Make them all personal. Um, but this is the um, fifth one I guess I've done. I did a purple, I did a white, and now this is the black. So it's actually the sixth. Six different cards and I'm telling you I know this video was kind of long, but I had to stop and start it, and if I had just gone back to back to back to back and I had other mats, I could have gotten all these project, this, all these cards done. If I had uh, three different mats, and they were all loaded, um, because you could easily put the, the paper on it while you're, um, while the thing's cutting and drawing and doing its thing. You could easily have done that. You could probably get that all cut out in probably like six or seven minutes. Six of them. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, using the time between while it's cutting to pull the other parts off. It's pretty amazing. Now, here's the load button. The same button unloads it. And you can pause. This is the power button. The, the worst thing I had when I got this um, machine it was updating the firmware. When I went to do the firmware at first, it didn't go through and where this is a clear white button, it was displaying in red. And that is because I called the Cricut company and they said it was because the firmware had not gone through and it was in like the middle of that download and it was sitting there on it. And that's why it was in red. So I went back in the machine, in the design software, and I did the firmware again, and I just redid the firmware. I said, you know, update firmware on it. It was at a different spot. Uh, clicked on that, and it ran it through to the Explorer. It took about five or six minutes to do. Then it was done. It shut off as it's supposed to, and then I turned it back on, and it worked great. And then, then I was able to make my first project. Um, which was the same kind of card, but they had only provided like an eight and a half by eleven sheet of card stock, I believe. Doing the twelve uh, by twelve, I think, is more cost efficient because you can get two at a time. Well, it's time efficient too. Um, so I just really like that, and I just I wanted to share that. Um, I know the design software is a little bit confusing to me, and maybe because it's confusing to me that I'll be able to make it in more simpler terms for every, everyone else. I know a lot of people have given me a lot of advice on it um, and a lot of forums on Facebook 
um, one's Cricut Pioneers. If you get a Cricut of any kind and you want to join that, um, you can just send a request and um, it's a great group to be in. There's also Design um, Studio one on Facebook. And they are ones that are just more for the Explorer. It's good for when you're starting out the Explorer and you've got questions and both groups seem to have a little place where they um, will let you search um, the past things that have come up. So that's really, really helpful. The Cricut Night Pioneers have been the best because they've been sharing SVG files. And there's a really great guy in there named Christopher Lopez. And he is really good by if you have a question, he will try to solve it for you. And he's made a lot of SVGs for people or helped find them if they didn't know where they were. There's a lot of free ones out there. Those SVGs are just the different files. And they get it all broken down. There's lots of videos to watch. And I have been watching videos. But honestly, when I got this, um, the computer part scared me a little bit. So we'll see how quickly I adapt to it. I've heard some people were just up and going real quick and I have access to 2,000 different images in Design Studio. Um, I called those the wrong thing. <laughs> in the, um, the um, I think it's called, the, uh, anyway, in the Cricut um, account I've got access to it and I, um, so I can use that for two weeks. So I'm trying to get on this as quickly as possible and um, learn everything I can, use all my images before I'm not able to use them anymore because I don't know that I'm going to get a subscription um, at this point, but I may get in the future. You just never know. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you have a good day. Bye. Here's all the cards I've made um, when I added the enamel dots that I had made previously and the insides showing how I personalized each card. Thank you for watching.